Welcome to the Jolly Rover gameplay demo. My name is Andrew Golding and I'm the designer, programmer and producer of the game. The game is currently at the alpha stage, with all art and animation in the first act, but with very little sound and currently no voice. Ok, so in this scene we see Gaius has unwittingly escaped the brig. This is where many of the main gameplay mechanics are explained to the player in an interactive tutorial sequence. Here we're meeting our, first, our second pirate character, Melvin. Melvin believes Gaius to be his shipmate Davy because Gaius is now sporting Davy's hat. And here we get the option to convince Melvin that that's the case. So with Melvin partially convinced, he begins reminiscing about an adventure that him and Davy went on. And it's up to us to, to uh, fill in the blanks of his story, but at the moment we don't have that information. This is an opportune time to introduce Juan Leon, who becomes our companion throughout the game once, we, once he's freed from his cage, and also doubles as a hint book of sorts. I wanted players to never have to leave the game to consult a walkthrough, and thought, why not just include one directly in the game? If we look at the top of the screen, we'll see a quest bar. The quest bar keeps track of the player's current task during the game. From time to time, it'll update briefly with various ridiculous quests. I wanted it to be both useful and a parody of itself. We also see the score bar, showing our current score. This is a throwback to the old Sierra Adventures, which had a score and a pleasing jingle every time you progressed, which I think is kind of nice. Attached to the score is your current rank, which at the moment is Lily Livid Landlubber, and progresses through the likes of Powder Monkey and Cowardly Kraken, all the way up to Pirate Lord. With Jolly Rover, I wanted, it, I wanted to make it accessible to a broad audience, but at the same time not dumb it down to alienate a more hardcore audience. To reach this balance I've implemented a few features which I'll go through now. First off, I didn't want the game to be a pixel hunt. Adventure games should be about puzzles, character and story. So by pressing the space bar, it highlights all things you can interact with in the scene. Though this is not really a new innovation in adventure games. Secondly, I get frustrated when adventure, in adventure games when I can't remember what I've already interacted with and waste time trying things again to receive the same response. So I implemented a feature that when you move the cursor over an item you'll see blue text if an item will give you a response that you haven't seen before. Otherwise you'll see white text. This is additionally implemented for inventory items. So we pick up the keys here. We'll try using them on the lock. Which we currently can't open because it's rusty. Here one starts giving us some hints on how to get the lock open. We can additionally click on him while he's still in the cage and ask him for further hints. So we can pick up the scarf just behind us. go on the brick to retrieve the whale oil lamp. So combining these things together, we make an oily scarf in which to oil the rusty lock. Using the keys with the newly oiled lock, we free one and get a brief tutorial box telling us about how we can chat with Juan. Juan is a bit of a crazy old parrot and will normally give you a very cryptic hint or clue towards the current task that you're trying to do. But if you give him a cracker, he suddenly becomes more lucid and will give you the clear solution. Juan will pop up from time to time just to remind you that he's there but players who are experienced in adventure games can just blow him off and never really have to see him at all. You can also ask him 
what you're currently supposed to be doing. And he'll give you a bit of a crazy answer to uh, point you in the right direction. This is in addition to the quest bar at the top of the screen. So we'll just get rid of one now. Now earlier I mentioned crackers, and crackers are um, found through general exploration. So here we have the obvious cracker barrel, which Gaius picks up. And every time you get crackers, you get you get three crackers. The crackers, in addition to the pieces of eight, are collectibles that you can collect all throughout the game. And they, the reason that they were implemented is to increase the replayability of the game. If you look at our log, we can get an idea of how many crackers we've found, how many pieces of eight we've found, and additionally, how many pirate flags we've found. Pirate flags are a bit, are a bit more secret, um, and there's four pirate flags you can find on each one of the three islands that you go across. These unlock pirate bios. The crackers unlock pieces of concept art, and the pieces of eight unlock main menu, or unlock audio tracks. You can also see your progress throughout the game in the log. In addition to the, the log, there's also loot, which is a way of implementing uh, an achievement-like system to um, encourage players to go back through the game and collect the achievements that they haven't uh, collected already. 75% of these will you'll get through normal gameplay, but there'll be a few that um, you've got to get through either solving puzzles a slightly different way or by collecting all of the items possible in the game. In addition to this, I've implemented a feature which I think is pretty cool, which is developer commentary. Once you finish the game, you'll unlock developer commentary. And that's that will uh, spawn little scrolls uh, in scenes that players can click on to hear me chatting about design decisions and various things that cropped up during development, as well as the original voice auditions for each character, and possibly information from other people involved in development. Well that's it for my little demo. Uh, Jolly Rover is set for release in uh, for PC and Mac in June, and will be digitally distributed off my site, and hopefully where all good games are sold. Thank you.